have a look at the pewter unit for the work center pro the same machine that was disassembled and has been the subject of the last couple of videos this is the fuser unit as i said and it has a clear warning 230 degrees celsius 390 degrees fahrenheit bit of information here nothing too much same thing again they clearly don't want you to burn yourself this is a felt based material everything inside here is sort of like a little felt um, it's all coated. I don't know how they managed to get this to stick on. Um, clearly, obviously, it's capable of standing high temperature. There's a bit of arrows for some things to do, and I'll have to figure out what that is. And there's a deep one that side. We'll have a look into that. And this thing may open out very easily. I suspect that's what will happen. Um, right. Bottom, full felt again. And then this next piece again, felt here. And Another warning, so play to open yourself. Um, we're not gonna plug this in, so it doesn't matter. Not that we even know how to plug it in because we've disassembled the entire machine. So, some nice little screws, easy enough to come out. Let's have a look at the sides. This side has some instruction with a lever, which suggests that if I pull that lever, I can flip the whole bottom open. It does look like it's hinged. So that was probably the next thing to do. And then let's have a look at the other side. Right, onto this, we see some roller. I see a big metal gear there. Um, some pins for some communication. And then this is most likely power. Yeah, given the size of those contacts, most likely power. So let's flip the lever first and then start disassembling screws as need be. I didn't do much, uh, nothing really came off. It does stretch these springs here, one on each side, but um, I don't know. There's a drum here that is definitely damaged, has been damaged somewhere in the process. At least the coating has been damaged. I don't know if that drum is in fact heating, and this is probably something to press the paper against it. Or if the heat just comes down here, if it's transferred down, so. Let's get cracking again because there's a second drum. So there's a drum, a next drum, and two drum. Hmm. All right, all right. Let's open some more. See what we can get. You know, for quite easily, a couple of screws to cut the handle. We'll use that somewhere else, maybe. And again, something bad happened in here. Something uh, not really suited for this, or so some reason. It's going to strip this. There's another ruler in here that is quite soft, silicone rubber, I would assume it's it's pretty soft. And there's this, which has paper and which seems like a roll out and in. Um, I don't know, it's a kind of waxy synthetic material, not really paper as I said. But um, yeah, huh, well, look at that, it's coming out. So who knows what that does. How that relates in this whole process but it definitely uh, it's some sort of synthetic material with mind you with some kind of sticky substance on it hmm. right okay let me just roll this back in because i don't know what it is and it's probably gonna mess up a lot of things right so we have ways in that we definitely do uh, I just have to look out for these springs because these are pretty strong springs. Don't want this flying in my face. Um, but yeah, let's continue stripping. Seems like we're going to find some more interesting stuff than I thought they had in this. Fortunately for me, Xerox does excellent design. So one of the screws on that this thing is the one that let the spring out and there's no more tension. There's no major problems. I'm not going to get hit in the face with it. I mean, you got to love how these people design. Look at the thickness of this piece of metal here. I mean, this is substantial. They're quite, quite good at design. Really is brilliant looking at what they do. Turns out, uh, this is run by this mechanism here. And the paper, the synthetic material, not paper, let me correct myself again, runs from this one around this ruler and onto the other one. I suspected it was going between one ruler and another. I just didn't realize that it was this ruler because it, it looked similar, but not 
that's nice and neat and clean as that one so when we turn this it goes around this one and goes here I guess it's coating in between and this roller looks like that silicone roller looked like it was pressing against this so basically I think they've been trying to coat this with a light amount of that synthetic fluid uh, first guess might be silicone oil but again you know who knows right but it does feel a little tacky a little oily and it could possibly be a synthetic based um, oil or lubricant like a silicone based thing I do not know what these are it would be interesting taking these out and seeing what they are got two of these um, who knows what they are but they have substantial wires to them so it's not a simple little sensor otherwise that made no sense having this kind of gauge wire on it and these are rated at 600 volts you know it's a substantial wire right uh not seen an ewg size easily on it but it's gonna be there somewhere when we get a little food in we'll be able to decipher that on this side we see the plug for the wires coming in and i see two terminals in here suspect that's our heating elements there so that means this is our hot drum and that transfers that heat on to what appears to be as you could see my finger is notching it so yep it's a rubber drum probably a silicone based rubber again but as you can see it's not very durable so these things have been subject to you know any kind of small uh misplaced objects in impurities would be the wrong word what would be the correct word anything that wasn't meant to go through here would mash it up this is like this thing this is paper and something you know like that that is pliable that works even paper crumpled in the wrong way could have possibly caused this this thing is is it's very delicate and again inside it seems to be some sort of plastic not as soft but maybe high temperature again silicone possibly let me strip some more We've gotten a little further. This is the other side of it. We've taken off the um, felt base material. So, yeah, the roller spins, everything runs as we expected. I suspect the papers. I don't know if he transfers from here to there. I'm really not sure where the paper runs. So if it runs through the middle here, it should probably make more sense actually. And uh, this would just be a pressing roller, and then there's the heating elements here. Um, right, I need to take this out carefully. I just need to figure out how to get them out uh, took some time and get these out right we'll have a look at those just in a little bit and uh, this is the felt base piece I've obviously nicked it a little bit but um, notwithstanding um, I wasn't sure if this was going to be metal or didn't really think it would have been plastic it is plastic uh, with this felt coating on it so I initially thought this was going to be a metal piece uh, it's clearly very dusty as you could see uh, but yeah not sure why it had to be felt something worth investigating taking one of these um, tubes out it looks dodgy like a halogen lamp um, certain sections seem to be just cooled up and other sections are a little bit more um, well tightly worn uh different lengths if you have a look i'm not sure if this is coming across but you can see these are smaller on this end and bigger on this end the tightly worn uh, ratio to the less tightly worn sections it says toshiba on it right s and there's also a number on this side let me see if i can get hold of that Let's see what that says uh it's a long number I'll probably have to take a picture. It's G H one eight seven. Looks like a V five two zero W X one B. Right. Interesting. So I'll have a look into this and see if it really is just um basically a quartz halogen light, uh, quartz base surface. That's why I'm trying not to touch it halogen light uh, they're using as a heat source which is not a bad idea it's not a bad idea at all actually so completely in pieces this is the M1 end plate this is the next end plate uh, this little screw has to come out for that to move but that doesn't really get out um, this appears to be a pushing um, 
bit too much movement for it to be a bear and I think uh, could be wrong but it looks like a bush in and this is the gear looks like it's plastic not metal as originally taught I don't see the point in taking this gear off and taking this off to see there's nothing but a shaft in here let's have a look inside of it um, yeah just a shaft not quite sure what material it is um, seems to be aluminum could be oh, who knows um, but yeah well, most likely it's aluminum it's not that heavy so I don't think it's steel um, it's not a light either this next piece here for the arrows well it turns out those arrows don't do anything I mean yeah maybe this moves a little but uh, they don't do anything so that was a little misleading no thanks there from Xerox uh, two Xerox this is the roller again I assume it's a silicone rubber but damn it's heavy it's really looks like it's this thick metal which is substantial I mean that's not substantial I, I don't know if it's stainless steel um, it could just be steel with a little bit of chrome in it yeah and who knows what grade of steel it is but it is substantial definitely a solid piece of thing maybe makes a good rolling pin for those who know what that is all right and these are the bearings that they have on the end of this they actually put bearings you know, it's chinese has numbers um but yeah you know i've gotten two free bearings granted they've held the clips in so yeah they can be used for something or the other and again i have the shaft that it's on but I, i'm not sure i could really use that so let's crack this and see if i can figure out any of these and what this is let's lift this up let's have a look at it right so this is the plate from on top of it that had this sort of i don't know sensor maybe we'll see if we can figure what that auto that is and then this now as you can see the wires on this are all relatively substantial so one would assume it's carrying some power i don't see another reason to put wires that thick look at these and where they really join to if you notice this here red comes down to that and comes in from the red on this side which seems to suggest that this is some kind of thermal protection so some kind of um possibly thermostat um that's my first guess i haven't looked up the numbers yet but there are numbers i'm gonna look that up and see if we can figure that out this i'm still not sure yet looks like a kind of captain tape so it's definitely high temperature um yes but exactly where it is we'll have to do some investigation the video is quite long already but i really just want to deal with all the things that came up stripping this down instead of put this onto a second video so it's gonna yes extend into probably over 20 minutes first thing to look at is the lubricant uh, what was used and why it was used the rollers confirm it's silicone rubber is there anything else they can use the felt why was that used the halogen tubes is that a common practice does it make sense some specs on it the thermostat which again i figured out coming down to the end and just little specs on it why it's used the thermistor which i should have figured out at that point in time um there isn't very much writing on it but it should have been it's the same concept that was used in the um coffee machine and uh, makes sense a little explanation on that so let's jump straight into the lubricant jumping into the diffuser oil the easiest way to get good information is to look for the msds so this is the safety sheet from xerox and as we can see it's pretty much a lubricant clear substance makes sense clear appearance viscous liquid which is what we found out moving on what we see is a slight irritant and it's a polydimethyl siloxane yeah what i expect to be silicone oil so spot on there let's move on out to the rulers well it appears that apart from silicone rubber fluoroelastomers can be used for uh, these uh, applications unfortunately fluoroelastomers don't have the release that the silicone rubbers do so they require some sort of lubricant so it does seem to suggest that this is in fact a fluoroelastomer and not a silicone rubber 
those silicon rubber is a good choice for this application it may not be silicon rubber again no way to verify research did not yield a good answer for why felt is used in this device why it's all over why it's in the bottom there best guess is it's there to contain any loose uh, toner that might be around uh, trying to trap it but that's a guess i have not found anything that says that's what it's really meant to be used for jumping now into the toshiba infrared halogen heater and i found a catalog it's not the perfectly car catalog but it will do for our purposes moving on now into the features of it it's high efficiency apparently heats up in one to two seconds doesn't contaminate because it's a sealed uh, quartz tube it's long life well long is relative all right and maintains its output so this is a basic quick look at it and that's pretty much what we saw it to be and then efficiency of the energy source how much is infrared radiation 75 percent of the power is emitted as infrared rays even though it says 76.1 any things but yeah pretty much the rate of output uh, as opposed to different um, types of heaters and the long life again long being relative 5000 this is a comparison of the different types of heaters that they could have used halogen carbon heater and a cantal heater which is a basically a nichrome type wire i believe well not nichrome actually chromium aluminum and iron so not nickel nichrome is not nickel Anyway, the rise and fall in temperature, if you look at it, uh, 0 to 3 seconds as opposed to 1 to 2 minutes for the carbon heater, 2 to 5 seconds for the carbon heater, so not that great. Carbon heater is uh, probably a little bit messier with in terms of the, you know, output from it. Um, lifespan, 5,000, 5,000, 20,000, so not the greatest lifespan, but not bad too much. Um, the output is maintained and that is probably one of the more important things in an application like this where you really is a precision application and you really don't want the output to decrease over time so that's really you know a good application and then the bottom there has some graphics that shows where you know the heat is emitted and the spectrums jumping in further this shows the standard harness ptfe and glass braid um, you can pause if you want to see this nothing too great in that this is now the product line and this tells you uh, jhs we did not have a jhs we don't have actually a number that is on this but it gives us a fairly idea so it's a standard thing the 187 that we have in our number is 187 volts the next number that we have 520w means it's 520 watts so it's two of those basically 1040 watts the overall length and all this other information not that important to us looking at the thermostat we can see 210c 2455 rc jumping on the net we can find a pretty similar form factor 2455 rc it has operating ranges from 0 to 260 degrees Celsius. We saw 210C, so ours is a 210 degrees Celsius. It has 120 to 250, makes sense for the application. Uh, not getting into the rest of things, the amperage rating, uh, 15 or 10 amps, and that would be again 120 and 250, and that would be well in excess of what the halogen would be able to do. This is in line with the halogen. And what it basically does is if you reach 210 degrees Celsius, it cuts off. And that makes sense. It's a safety measure. Basically, the system is supposed to run at 200 degrees Celsius, as we saw in the beginning of the video with the rated thing. So if it ever reaches 210, it's too hot. It will just cut off until it drops back to under 210. And then the thermostat will kick back in. The Capton tape should have been a dead giveaway that this was, in fact, a thermistor. The too little uh, what looks like heat shrink on the top of it uh, fooled me initially thinking that the wires were thicker than they are really are it says 79k in the back of it i have not been able to find a good spec sheet for a 79k to mister that said um, i have a thermometer and i have a multimeter so checking i got 74.4k at 31 degrees celsius and I ran the temperature up to 65 with some warm water, again checking, and I got 10.6K. So confirm it is an NTC thermistor. And 
makes sense. What that does is that's pretty much giving the feedback to the microprocessor to basically say how to turn on and off that halogen lamp to keep it within temperature range. The thermostat is the safety, the backup in case it all fails. The reason that there are two thermistors and two thermostats is to balance both sides and keep track of both sides. The halogen tubes are worn more tightly on one side and that has been staggered. That probably allows them to turn one up a little bit more, turn the other one down a little bit more and just kind of balance the system properly with the two feedbacks on both sides. So maybe that's why it's done. I'm sure they have a very good reason and I'm sure the testing probably shows that's probably the best way to do it. I mean, Xerox is a brilliant company.